Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Designing Your Own CNC Mill. This particular episode, I'm gonna focus on an existing mill I have, which is this Tag. what we can learn from it and apply that to designing the granite epoxy mill. I actually just purchased this aftermarket frame, which is a really big improvement, and it's made by Stuart Andrews. He's on the Tag Facebook group. This is the frame as received. And I'm gonna make a modification to it, which is the same modification I'm planning to design into the granite epoxy mill. And it will be a tramming provision between the column and the base using epoxy. So this particular design, this is machined very accurately. And if you do need to tram it, the recommended method is to use a couple of shims, you know, one or two thousandths thick. But I wanna do it with epoxy, even though it might not need it on this mill, it's more of a practice so I can use it on the one I'm gonna design from scratch. These four holes I added, they weren't part of the original design as I bought it. Inside each of those holes is a set screw, quarter 20. Most set screws are cup point that dig into the material. This is a flat point. The set screws you can raise and lower, they will push on the bottom surface here and you can adjust your tram that way. And once you have everything where you want it, I'll pour in epoxy on this surface and this surface after the epoxy cures tighten everything down. Here is my setup to see how much the frame deflects. An indicator stand, an old stair, it's probably 50 years old, and a brown and sharp indicator. Each division is half a thousandths. I don't have a magnetic base, so I made this strap clamp that keeps the indicator secure. And I have the clamp here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push on this and see how much the indicator moves. When this is completely secured and this surface is fully touching this surface as it's designed. So the set screws are in there right now, but they're backed all the way out so they're not touching. So that's gonna be my baseline. Then I'm gonna repeat the same test by raising the set screws so there's a small gap here, uh, maybe a millimeter or 40 thousandths of an inch, and tighten these screws and then do the same test, push here, see how much the indicator moves. And then I'm gonna do a third test, which is squeeze epoxy inside here. And after the epoxy cures, clamp everything down again and then push again. So the goal of this is to see, does the addition of epoxy as a tramming agent cause more deformation of the column as you push on it? So we're starting at 10 on the, on the brown and sharp. I'm leaning into this as hard as I can. So it moved two and a half thousandths. And I let go, it goes right back to 10. Try it again. It's at seven and a half thousandths. Let it go, goes to 10. One more time. Seven and a half thousandths, goes to 10. I do have a force gauge. My original plan was to push this on it and see how much the needle moved. I'm gonna slip right off if I try pushing this and I won't be able to see the number anyway. And I think if I just push this as hard as I can, it's probably good enough. I'll also mark where the indicator tip was in case it moves. Now my setup, I have a gap in here. It's about 50 thousandths of an inch. So the column is resting on the set screws here and then the clamp screws are really tight. And the rest of the setup is the same. And here you see we're on 10. So I'm just gonna see if it repeats. 10. 10, okay. It moved to four and a half. It moved to four. It moved to four and a half. And it repeats to 10. With a column resting on the set screws right now, it's moving five and a half thousandths of an inch when I push it as hard as I can. So this is definitely weaker than what I had before. Now the question is when I fill this with epoxy, will it go back to where I was or will it be even worse than it is now or somewhere in between? I just took the base and the column apart. So there's the base and here's the column upside down. Here you can see depressions. This is the reason I didn't want to use a cup head set screw because it would make an even bigger depression. So with this flat head set screw, the surface area looks to be too small to withstand the force and the material yielded. So when we put epoxy on this whole surface, the force will be spread over a much larger cross-sectional area and that will make the pressure or the stress much less on the material. Here are the four set screws. They don't look like they have any damage to them. This setup here, I was experimenting with mold releases, what it would take to get the JB Weld epoxy off of the column and the base. And over here, I had nothing applied. Over here, I had Johnson's Paste Wax applied. And over here, I had this silicone lubricant I got from Home Depot. With nothing there, it, it came off, but left, left some on. The wax came off 100% clearly. And then the silicone blaster came off uh, about the same as nothing. So the wax was a clear winner here. The four screws are waxed. The top of the base is waxed. 
and the bottom of the column is waxed. And also the set screw surfaces are waxed. So the setup will be like this, four O-rings on this side, nothing on the other side, and we'll see if it makes any difference. Off camera, I mixed the whole bottles of JB Weld, and I also added wax to the rubber O-rings. It's hand tight against all the set screws. It looks like some epoxy came out from all the sides. I'm gonna leave this over the weekend. It's Tuesday and I'm back in the shop. Here's what it looks like. The washers got squeezed out a little bit. Glue squeeze out all the way on the front, the side. The left and the back also have glue squeeze out, so it should have pretty good coverage underneath. The screw looks clean on the sides of the rubber washer. On this side, we didn't have any rubber washer and they also look pretty clean. Here's the back, that looks good. So the left side, we have some voids here and here. The front, it looks completely filled. And on the right side, we have voids here. And I think over here. I'm gonna do the push test again, pushing on here. And this is with these partially tight, exactly the way it was when I put the epoxy, but I didn't have these really, really tight against the set screws. So I wanna see just filling that gap with epoxy, but not tightening this further, if that changes the reading here. Okay, I'm right on 10. Let's bump it a little, see if it repeats. So I can get about four and a half thousandths of movement. Now I'm gonna tighten these four clamp screws without loosening the set screws and see how much the needle moves as I tighten it. Because if this was all trammed out and then I go to tighten it and it moves, then it kind of defeats the purpose. Okay, so while I tightened it, it clearly moved. It moved uh, about a thousandths in either direction, maybe a thousandths and a half. So that wasn't very promising. Okay, it repeats. Here we go. That was as hard as I could. Two and a half thousandths movement. Two and a half of movement. Two and a half of movement. With these tightened all the way down, an epoxy in the middle, and I didn't loosen the set screws. Uh, we got two and a half thousandths of movement. Off camera, I just loosened these and made them finger tight, and I wanna loosen these set screws so there's no chance they're touching the plate at all. Now I'm gonna torque these down again. All four clamping bolts are very, very tight now, and they felt solid. Okay, we're at 10. Check that it repeats. Let's do the same test. <laughs> Two and a half thousand. Two and a half. Two and a half, as hard as I can push it. The epoxy, once it's clamped down fully, doesn't make the flex in the head any worse than it was without any epoxy at all and steel to steel. So steel to steel, I have two and a half thousandths of flex. And now with epoxy inside, the bolt's fully clamped and the set screws disengaged. I still have two and a half thousandths of flex. The movement while I tighten the screws here is about two thousandths of an inch up here. And then as I go between screws, I can get it to move back and forth and end up about where we started. So I'm wondering, because this frame has open slots instead of through holes, there might be some epoxy that didn't really fill this area. So as you tighten this bolt, it actually pivots on the edge of the epoxy and it causes the whole frame to tilt a little bit. The one I'm designing from scratch, uh, I'm gonna make sure these screws are inbound more so that there's epoxy completely surrounding them. I'm gonna separate the column from the base. I had wax on the threads and that comes off no problem. So epoxy didn't get stuck. And on this side, I had a rubber O-ring. This ring is for the clamping screw. This ring is for the leveling screw. In the moment of truth, let's see if I can separate this. Well, that was really easy. 
So look at this, the wax worked and here's the epoxy and it broke right off. Here's both in the same view. So it's flat here and it has a void here and so on. So I could have probably used more epoxy. This surface here looks good, very flat. So it looks like there was enough epoxy there. Didn't get around these edges here. It looks like it went all the way to the edge here. I think the reason maybe it moved when I was clamping is these screws weren't surrounded by the epoxy. Yeah, that came right off. The wax here as the mold release really worked. And that was this super cheap wax, so $6 from Home Depot. I do have an oil stone at home I'll probably bring in just to touch this up. Thanks for watching. See you next episode.